Hello and welcome to the third episode of the Explainable Machine Learning course taught by me, Ahmed Imam. Today we are going to talk about saliency maps. Saliency map is an explainable machine learning method that produces heat maps, which shows us the importance of each pixel to the decision taken by a given neural network. So let's go together through the code and learn how to implement saliency map in Python and PyTorch. We will go through the slides to understand the meaning of saliency map. Then we will go through the code to implement our ideas. So if you look saliency maps or saliency in particular in a dictionary, it will be the quality of being particularly important. If we combine these two ideas together, we are going to find that saliency maps means a map which represents the importance of each pixel in a specific image. All right. Okay. So to understand the mathematical concept behind this, we will go through an example. Let's say we have a, an image and we know what is the meaning of this image. For example, we have an image of a cat and we have a neural network which can classify this input image as a cat. So we have a bear. We have a, an image and a label related to this image. So we have an image or a label for this image. So if this image is being fed into a neural network, we will call this neural network function f and we will call the input image i node and the label of this cat, for example, let's say this class called c, which represent our class cat here. So the classification score of an image being classified by the classifier f function of i node, and we need to see what is the importance pixels in the input image, which is pushing the classifier to take this decision of classifying the image of a cat as a cat. What are the most important features in an image that makes a classifier classify a cat as a cat? So for example, if the cat has a long hair, so the saliency map should highlight the height, the long hair of the cat or eyes of the cat or the legs of the cat or something like this. So for example, if we have an elephant or a, a camel, so the long neck of the camel should be highlighted by a saliency map because it's a specific feature which, which is specialized for a giraffe, for example. So a giraffe, we should expect that a saliency map should highlight the long neck of a giraffe. All right. Since these pixels are important, so if we make a small changes in the value of these pixels, if we maybe hide these pixels, the classification score should to each pixel and see the effect of, of these small changes into the classification score. And if you studied calculus or differentiation in your high school, you're going to remember this. Small changes with effects on the final results. This is the definition of differentiation. So to understand or to get the importance of each pixel re with respect to the classification score, we will need to implement this equation, partial differentiation of the classification score with respect to the input image. This equals to the computation of a saliency map. Since our input image in our example here is an RGB image, which has three channels of colors, red, green, and blue, we should expect also that each channel of these three color channel to have a specific saliency map. For example, the pixel in the red channel are not the same in importance. Maybe there are some pixels in the corner which are important in the red channel and not important in the green channel. So if we have a three channel input image or an RGB image, we should expect to have three saliency map, one for each color channel. But for visualization purposes, sometimes we only visualize the most important saliency map or the most important channel which will have the highest absolute influential pixels. So we'll just get the saliency map, the three saliency map, one for each color channel, red, green, and blue, and we will put it through a NumPy max function, and we will get the channel with the highest influence or the highest change in pixels. Let's go to the coding together to understand how to implement saliency maps in Python.
we always import the helper functions and the helper packages. So the most important packages are OpenCV, Torch, and Pillow. And here specifically, we need to download the ResNet 50 model weights of the ResNet 50 models and processing techniques used in the main ResNet 50. Then we will need to instantiate ResNet 50. You just need to write ResNet 50 and in the argument you need to state ResNet 50 underscore weights. The default means to get the latest weights. Pre-processing steps, you will need to have ResNet 50 underscore weights. You need to import it at the beginning. Then from it you need to state the default to get the latest weights and then do transforms and assign this to a variable. We are calling the variable here preprocess. Then preprocess here is a sequential of steps or sequential of function which do the same pre-processing steps done in the training of ResNet 50. All right. And the same as the previous tutorial, we are having an image of a peacock and we can open the image by running payload.image.open and then state the file path dimension which should have three channels in this case r g and b red green and blue the second dimension is the width the third dimension is the height but the problem is by torch is expecting to have a four dimension input and the first dimension should be the batch dimension this means that by torch is expecting or while the training using by torch you should always it's better to feed the images in form of mini batches each mini batch consists of for an example eight images or 12 images or 256 images some sort of a group of images or a group of input which will make the training process a little bit faster in our example we need to add a new dimension at the beginning of the dimensions the index of this dimension should be zero so right now we are adding a new dimension at the beginning of the old dimension right now we are adding dimension here in index zero so our image should have right now four dimensions the first dimension should have one image so that our mini batch is consisting of one image then the channel dimension should have three then the width then the height right now our input image is on the cpu and we need to push it into the gpu to be able to use by torch to push any input to the gpu you just need to add .cuda to the specific tensor. I would say that this process is being done under the hood here in .transforms. So maybe the last step of the transformation or the pre-processing steps is to change our input image from numpy array to a tensor data form. So we pushed our input to the GPU. By default, the input image is not being attached to the computational graph. Somebody will ask me, what is the meaning of computational graph, Ahmed? I will tell you, it is a graph or a tree of computation which is being made when we feed an input image through the neural network. From the start, from the input layer till the classification layer. When we write dot requires grads, this means that we are telling PyTorch, hey, look at this input image and put it into the calculations because when we need to get the derivatives or the importance of each pixel from this specific input data we will need to have its value to get the derivatives from this input image with respect to the classification score at the end we will need to add this specific image to the tree of computation to be able to get the derivatives of this image with respect to classification score at the end. Right now we are having an image which is being attached to the computational graph. What do we need to do right now is just feeding this image into our classifier. So let's do this step. We are just having our model here which is ResNet50 and the image underscore transform it which is the input image being transform it we are doing the pre-processing steps to this image to be at the same size and shape and also data form which is tensor which is being expected by pytorch right now our prediction is saved in in bread here so pred is having the predictions the output of our neural network let's get the shape of the prediction our prediction consists of two dimension one and one thousand this means that resnet 50 has thousand outputs at the end because it has thousand classes each class has a classification score and the classified 
class will be the class with the highest classification score. We need to get the highest classification score or we need to know which class has the highest classification score by ResNet 50. So we'll need to enter this first dimension here by having our square brackets and feeding it with zero, the index of the first dimension, then writing argmax and take care we are using argmax not max to get the index not the value of the highest classification score. Let's see what is our classification score. We have the index number seven. And if you go to PyTorch website, ResNet 50, you will see that the seventh index in the last classification layer is related to or is corresponding to the Bika class. Right now, the neuron that has the highest classification score can be written this way. The prediction then enters the first dimension, which has only one, so we need to access this first. So we access this by just stating zero here. And to get the index of the highest classification score, we are feeding it with the index, which we stated here. Right now, everything is ready, and we just need to calculate this equation here, the partial differentiation of the classification score with respect to the input image. And we will do this with adding dot backward to the classification score that we are interested in, this highest classification score. So by adding dot backward to the highest classification score, we are doing the back propagation step. So the partial differentiation of the classification score with respect to the input image will be image underscore transform Grad. This is this, the equation that we need. The partial differentiation of the classification score with respect to the input image will be calculated by dot grad method. And to remove the batch dimensions that we added to be able to feed an input image to PyTorch will be done by doing the squeeze. So squeeze zero will remove the first dimension that we added for feeding the input image to the model. Then we will need to get our saliency maps from the GPU to the CPU to be able to plot it here in our Jupyter notebook. And this step, we need to at first send it to the CPU again by, by writing dot CPU and then detach it from the GPU and then use dot numpy to transform it into a numby array. Right now we are having three channels or three saliency map. A saliency map which consists of three channels, channel one, channel two, channel three. Let's see the shape of channel one. Channel one is an image or a plot of 224 multiplied 224, an image of the input image also. To see the input image again, to be able to compare our peacock image. The moment of truth, let's plot the first channel of the three channel saliency map, channel number one, and I'm using the absolute value of the channel. So if it's negative or positive, I'm just ignoring the signal right now. I just need to see the value of the important pixels and then color bar to show the meaning of the color. Here we are having a cluster of high value pixels. The neural network sees that these pixels are important, but the silency map is not highlighting the important parts of the peacock, which represent a problem in, in this explainability method, which leads us in the coming tutorials. Let's plot the second channel. Maybe it would be a little bit better than the first channel. And it's not that different. Also the same cluster here of colors and the third channel also having the same thing. And by this, we are concluding our tutorial for today. It's, it's not that different. Also the same cluster here of colors and the third channel also having the same thing. And by this, we are concluding our tutorial for today. Thank you. And if you are interested in explainable machine learning, I would like you to subscribe to our channel and wait for our next tutorial. Bye bye.